the number one fundamental difference between primary biliary cholangitis versus primary sclerosing cholangitis that means pvc versus psc is this that both of them they involve the bile duct both of them they are chronic cholestatic liver disease but in primary biliary cholangitis they only involve the disease process only involve the intrahepatic bile ducts because some bile ducts are within the liver some are outside the liver those which are within the liver those are only selectively involved by the disease process in the primary biliary cholangitis which was also previously called primary biliary cirrhosis on the contrary in primary sclerosing cholangitis psc because cholangitis is there there is inflammation of the bile duct is happening but the inflammation of the bile duct is involving both intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts that means the bile ducts which are there inside the liver and bile ducts which are there outside the liver both are getting involved this is the fundamental difference between the number one fundamental difference between this that in primary biliary cirrhosis the disease process which is mostly autoimmune there's autoimmune mediated destruction of intrahepatic bile ducts typically small size intrahepatic bile duct in primary sclerosing cholangitis there is progressive inflammation and sclerosis fibrosis and narrowing of the bile ducts but the bile ducts are in that is involved in the disease process they are both within the liver intrahepatic and outside the liver extrahepatic and please also always remember that extrahepatic bile duct by definition is not involved in the primary biliary cholangitis or primary biliary cirrhosis pbc but it is obviously involved in the primary sclerosing cholangitis this is the number one difference number two difference i am coming there that if you look at the context of these diseases these are both chronic cholestatic liver diseases which are coming with elevated cholestatic enzymes typically alkaline phosphatase but if you look at the typical profile of the patient of the chronic primary biliary cholangitis pbc you would be seeing that this is typically happening in 40s and 50s female they are more common in the female with history of often another autoimmune disorder like zogren syndrome rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune thyroiditis on the other side the context will be totally different in the primary sclerosing cholangitis psc psc typically would happen in the males in their 40s and typically it would be associated with some inflammatory bowel diseases 70.8 to 87% cases they are associated with ulcerative colitis and 13 to 18% crohn disease both of them could be associated both inflammatory bowel diseases but typically most common one are ulcerative colitis 78 to 87% so this is the second vital difference now coming to their lab diagnosis analysis if you look at they are also completely different both of them could be asymptomatic so both of them could present with uh, elevation of persistent elevation of the cholestatic liver enzymes like alkaline phosphatase but in primary biliary cirrhosis or primary biliary cholangitis which we call pbc we will be getting anti mitochondrial antibodies they are positive anti nuclear antibodies could also be positive but there will typically there will be no elevation of the p ankas or the ankas in this disease on the other side if we look at primary sclerosing cholangitis typically there will be elevation we no elevation of the anti mitochondrial antibodies there will be elevation of p ankas which may or may not be there but it is characteristically associated with that and obviously in those patient will be getting both the patient will be getting elevated cholestatic liver enzyme this feature would be there so this is another important finding and biopsies are not typically required for primary sclerosing cholangitis mrcp is diagnostic but for primary biliary cholangitis if you do biopsy certain experts prefer biopsy for primary biliary cholangitis they will be getting the non suppurative destructive cholangitis that means there will be autoimmune mediated non suppurative destruction of the intrahepatic bile duct this feature would be there and both of them there will be showing features of cholestatic liver diseases there will be elevation of the cholestatic liver enzymes like alkaline phosphatase or ggt this feature should be there and most of them many times this patient would come asymptomatic elevation in the liver function test actually particularly in the cholestatic enzyme elevation so i think these are the three key points which uh, summarizes the whole idea of the differences there are many other differences it is not about an exhaustive list of their differences but what i need to tell you that these are the things which you need to keep in mind 
if you see a 40s female uh, a female in their 40s and 50s coming with elevated liver enzymes particularly cholestatic liver enzyme alkaline phosphatase and there is associated feature of cholestasis that could be jaundice could be excoriation could be itchiness and anti mitochondrial antibodies are positive then you need to think about the primary biliary cholangitis or primary biliary cirrhosis and in that condition the problem is that that there is a autoimmune mediated destruction of the intrahepatic the bile ducts which are involved they are intrahepatic within the liver that is the key point primary sclerosing cholangitis typically medium to large size both bile ducts which are located within the liver and outside the liver they are involved and that would be typical in the backdrop of conditions of inflammatory bowel diseases as i mentioned both could be ulcerative colitis more commonly and also in some cases 30 to 80% could be crohn disease and then you can get the test which are positive uh, the lab test which will be positive other than the cholestatic enzymes would be pianka pianka could be positive but definitely uh, liver biopsy is not chosen right now the diagnosis would be psc and we prefer mrcp so that's all i think the the summary of the key differences between primary biliary cholangitis versus primary biliary uh, cirrhosis which is previously also known as primary biliary cholangitis versus primary sclerosing cholangitis that means pvc versus psc thank you so much